you for that. So we're here today talking about origins. And for my talk, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my own personal origins and kind of my journey to discovering that. So um, to start, growing up, I was basically your textbook overachiever. That is my real report card. <laughs> my mom still keeps them in a file at her house, so that tells you where we're coming from here. Um, I got straight A's. I won awards. Whatever I did, I wanted to do my absolute best. And that's because from an early age, I experienced this electrifying feeling of being recognized for my achievements. I mean, who doesn't want to feel at the top of the class, right? That's a pretty good feeling. So I went searching for that feeling at every turn. And you know, it's funny though, looking back, I still do kind of think of myself as this super creative kid too. I mean, I was always covered in marker from head to toe, always had some sort of art project kind of sprawled out on the kitchen table, much to my mother's annoyance. But that artistic spark always took a back seat to the academic excellence that I craved. See, even from that early age, I realized that the game of life seemed pretty straightforward. My purpose was to succeed, and success meant following the steps that society had laid out for me. High achievement equaled happiness in my mind. That was until my freshman year of college when this ac academic excellence addiction and this creative impulse decided to finally duke it out. So I remember I was a freshman and I was pre-med at the time. And one day it just occurred to me that the idea of becoming a doctor not only seemed like a little bit boring, but it also seemed kind of gross. I really can't stand the sign of blood. And if doctors, if you're in the audience, you're superhuman. I think you're amazing. It just very clearly wasn't right for me. So when I got really honest with myself, I realized that, that the entire reason why I was even interested in this profession was because I wanted people to think that I was smart. And even in my praise-induced semi-hypnotic state, I had the good sense to realize that, that was probably a pretty terrible way to choose your path of life, just wanting people to think you were smart. Although I am smart, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so that's when my whole sort of sense of this started to shift, and I thought, okay, I've got this figured out. I'm going to become an advertising major, right? I'm, I'm going to satisfy this little creative inner muse in me. I'm going to go down this more artistic route, but I'm just going to be the best darn advertising executive you've ever seen. Clearly, I hadn't learned my, my lesson yet. So the summer before my senior year of college, after being accepted into this very prestigious New York internship program at a top agency, I got my first big wake-up call. I realized that the success that I had been chasing down wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Every day I went into that Manhattan internship office, I felt like I had this dark cloud hanging over my head. I mean, I would look around and I would see everyone sort of, you know, rushing around to meet their deadlines and, and just under this immense pressure, sleep deprived. And I just remember thinking, there's no creativity here. There's no joy. There's no magic. So that's when things really started to shift for me. I got back to school my senior year and all my friends were like, oh my gosh, was it amazing? Are, are they going to offer you a job? And I just distinctly remember feeling like I had this, this giant choice in front of me. I could either lie, I could tell them that it was fantastic, I could tell them how well suited I was for big city ad life, or I could tell the truth. I could tell them that I hated it. I could tell them that my heart wasn't in it and risk looking for the first time in my life like I just couldn't hack it. I chose to tell the truth. And that was the first time that I really feel like I let my true core self define my path rather than the expectations of other people. The following two years were filled with all kinds of these pivotal forks where I was asked to either lean into my creativity, something that I was learning is, was inextricably linked to my happiness, or to defer to the path that I thought would bring me things like approval or do what was predictable or do what was expected. Thankfully though, the voice in my head that was saying, follow the joy, was becoming a lot louder than the voice that said, follow the recognition. Then, in May of 2013, I encountered yet another one of these pivotal crossroads. 
I was at an event, much like this one, called MisfitCon in Fargo. Some of you may have attended there before. Yeah. Um, it's an incredible event. And, and I was sitting in my chair doodling in my Moleskine notebook. I was just kind of like writing down all of these inspirational quotes. Some of you might be doing that here today, putting my own little artistic spin on it. And my friend AJ kind of snuck up behind me and looked over my shoulder and he said, oh my gosh, Caroline, are you an artist? You guys, you would have thought he accused me of murder. I was like, no, no, I didn't do it. I'm not an artist. There's no way. I just, I, there's no way that I could have accepted that this was a part of my identity. Little did I know that one question would literally change the course of my life. After the event, I couldn't get out of my head. I was just like, what is my deal? I've always been a creative person. Why can I not just say I'm an artist? That is until I realized this one life-changing truth. You are what you decide to be. And I realized that all I had to do to be an artist was just make art. So that's what I did. I just started experimenting with all kinds of different styles and mediums, and I started sharing my story with people along the way. I, I, I started telling them about this journey and the ups and downs of coming into my own skin and really starting to see myself in this new light. And now, the coolest part is that my full-time job is being myself. It's amazing, believe me, trust me, it's great. Um, I get to share art with people, I get to create, I get to teach people, and I get to just share my journey, my personal journey, in a way that brings me pure, unadulterated joy. There's also no blood, which I'm a big fan of. So I realized I am an artist. Because I make art, that is who I am. And what I realized was, true happiness is not fueled by high achievement, it's fueled by this thing called authenticity. It doesn't come from the outside world, it comes from within us. Authenticity, to me, means finding alignment between who you are and what you do. It means narrowing the gap between those two things until they are one and the same. It means making decisions every day or every moment if you have to, that support and amplify the deepest, purest, most diverse parts of who you are. I have this vision, this mental image of sort of all of us arriving here to this world, however that happens, full of all of these pure, potent, unbridled colors. Infinite colors, in fact, because they're nuanced and they're varied, just like the infinite mix of gifts and talents and personalities and all of these different things that we all possess. But somewhere along the line, whether it's as we get older or as we kind of realize what's expected of us, the shoulds of the world start to, to muddy our palates. They start to the stress and the fear and the greed and all of these things start to act like gray veils that cover up the collective vibrance of our individuality. They stifle us and they leave us feeling dim and muted like mere shadows of our true selves. Authenticity is how we fight that gray. It's how we claw our way back to the purest expression of who we are. But it takes courage. In those moments that I told you guys about where you're faced with a choice, where you can either defer to the path that might get you a pat on the back, or to stand in your truth and to risk isolation or judgment. Those are the moments where we have to close our eyes and muster our guts and let the light of our true selves lead us forward. It's messy work, but I promise you it is so worth it. So this journey that I've been on, this journey to divorce myself from this idea that I have to be what other people want me to be, it has been the most magnificent gift. And it's because I've learned that cultivating a life that allows me to share the fullest range of all of my colors, that, that's at the heart of all the good stuff, you guys. That's joy, that's happiness, that's contentment. So before I close, I just wanna leave you with one question today. I want you to ask yourself, what is one thing that you can do today to help you live your most vibrant life? What's one thing that you can do to amplify your authenticity? Because I truly, truly believe that the world is a better, more beautiful place when we all show up as the most authentic, most vibrant versions of who we are.